All right. Welcome to today's Lunch and Learn webinar, The What, Why, and When of SQL Server Health Checks for Dynamics NAV, brought to you by ArcherPoint. You might be surprised that your Dynamics NAV SQL Server is not optimized to get the most from your system. Many times, although the server is set up correctly, it hasn't been done so according to best practices to optimize NAV performance. As they say, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure which is why you should be performing a health check on your SQL Server on a regular basis. During this webinar, you'll get the opportunity to see what a SQL Server health check can do for you, including establishing a baseline when things are running smoothly, so you have the documentation you need for future performance tuning, troubleshooting, and disaster recovery, identifying infrastructure and configuration issues so that you can correct them before they cause bigger problems and potentially impact you financially and implementing best practices, best practices for continued superior performance. Our presenter today is Rob Sanchez, a client service representative here at Archer Point and a SQL Server expert. For many years, Rob has focused on working with and troubleshooting SQL Server and related issues. At Archer Point, he's responsible for performing SQL Server health checks to ensure our clients are meeting best practices with server and database configuration and management. We will offer a Q&A at the end of Rob's presentation. You can either type your questions in the questions pane of your GoToWebinar console as we go along, or use the raise your hand option to ask your question verbally. I'll announce a person asking the question and unmute your line at that time. Without any further delay, we'll go ahead and get started. Rob, over to you. All right, thanks, Suzanne. Uh, so, SQL Server Health Checks. Um, what are they? Uh, I've been working with SQL Server here for a few years now, and um, problems can lie, you know, few and far between. Um, minuscule uh, issues like username trouble and connection trouble to the most catastrophic types of issues, which can often include data loss or um, just downtime uh, with your server. Um, so a SQL Server Health Check acts as a preventative maintenance for your server. Uh, when you own a car, you check the tire pressure, change the oil, check the alignment, and replace the windshield wipers. If you, if you live in the frozen north like myself, you might do this more often than others. Um, but you make all these actions to keep your car running, and you normally make them before they need to be done. Um, at least you should be doing so. Uh, in the same vein, the SQL Server Health Check will give you a complete picture of your SQL Server's health and status. Um, when we do this at Archer Point, we look at settings and configurations on the micro and macro scale to increase performance and efficiency so you can be certain that you're getting the most out of your uh, SQL Server setup. Um, today, I'll run through the steps that Archer Point takes when conducting a SQL Server Health Check and uh, try and answer a few of your questions and kind of show you why. Uh, why it would be a good idea to optimize your environment for an vision and for SQL Server. Uh, so throughout the process, we will uh, check settings and configurations for your server and database to make sure that they are optimized to meet best practices and the standards that we have for all of our clients. Uh, SQL Server setup isn't too complicated out of the box, but um, there are um, there are some things that can be done to make sure that it's adaptable and make sure that it's growing with the data and with the company that's that's using it. Um, we'll also, in, in the process, use Microsoft's performance analysis tool called Perfmon. Um, we'll, using that, we'll run a test on your environment during business hours to um, assess key performance bottlenecks and indicators uh, that basically this will give us a snapshot of your system uh, you know running it running its day-to-day -day options that we'll be able to use going forward at, uh, to troubleshoot and to diagnose any trouble uh, the last step of the SQL Server Health Check is providing a, a complete report of our findings and going over the results uh, we'll also be able to help you make any changes um, or recommendations that we find uh, in going through your going through your environment. Uh, so to start here, um, we begin by just uh, acquiring your infrastructure layout. 
uh, getting the lay of the land, whether you know whether you're physical or virtual environment. Uh, we get the disk locations and the uh, RAID arrays, along with capacity and usage ratios. Uh, this starts to form uh, the kind of the image you see on the right, which is our final results sheet. Basically, as we go through this, um, you know, we're checking all these settings and configurations, and uh, we're recording them here for you in the end. Uh, it will serve as kind of a one-stop shop for you to uh, see everything that you need to see about your SQL Server, kind of uh, in just a few pages, rather than spread them out, spread about as menus. Uh, so just kind of as a, as a few examples of the types of server properties that we check here, the, um, the first major thing we're going to look at is going to be the installed RAM um, processors and um, and settings around that. Uh, so here's just a picture of our server properties, and you know we will go in and gather this and kind of compare it to our best practices. Um, you know, using the versions that you have for SQL Server and of your Windows Server edition, we'll be able to make some recommendations there and make sure that we're meeting a, you know, meeting all the standards that we can. Uh, there's several several other settings here that we uh, we kind of go through and like to check on. Um, that I will kind of list it off to the side here. Um, we can talk about in more detail, I guess, if we need to. So um, maximum server memory is uh, often a setting that can go overlooked in SQL Server. Uh, SQL Server can operate just fine with the default value here, which you see is set in the screenshot, that 214,000 uh, something number. Um, basically, that's just what it has out of the box. But we can uh, optimize that and make SQL Server perform more efficiently by uh, calculating an, uh, an accurate number for your system that takes into account uh, you know, the demands of your environment and the, the memory that you have installed in your server. So that's definitely something that that will that we do commonly see um, you know that hasn't been addressed yet, and it's a quick fix, and it often leads to some uh, relatively noticeable performance increases. So next, we will start looking into database settings and configurations. Uh, we'll do this primarily for your live database, but uh, we can definitely assess test and uh, development environments if needed, or uh, any other databases you have you know, working on your on your instances of SQL Server. Uh, we can go over that at the beginning of the call and you know expand that uh, umbrella if we need to look into more servers. Um, so for a database, you know, we we come in and gather the uh, size and space available. We like to see uh, we like to see how much space is left on all the drives, and uh, like to get kind of an idea for the speed at which the data is growing. Um, that's going to help a lot with predicting, you know, when to make certain upgrades or when to make certain infrastructure uh, infrastructure changes. Um, so to kind of to speak on the um, the growth and predictable growth again, uh, or a little bit further here, there's a, a common setting is uh, the files for for SQL Server are set to grow uh, by by a percentage amount. You can see in this screenshot on the bottom right, it says by 10%. Uh, so this works out well for like initial SQL Server databases, but as data grows and you're you know you're not operating with just like a a starter a starter level company, um, it's better to use a uh, a fixed amount so that your database is growing by a um, a solid amount every time. You know exactly what, you know what increment it's going to increase by. Uh, this 10% amount is going to result in some exponential growth, and ultimately it'll be a little bit uncontrollable. And uh, the worst thing we could do is have have some drives fill up when we need that space. So after we take a look at the server settings and database settings, the next thing that we look into here are the maintenance jobs. Um, there are several there are several jobs, um, and some clients and systems uh, make more use or take more use out of 
uh, the maintenance jobs and the SQL Server job aspect of Microsoft SQL Server. Um, but we really only look for two um, that, that we find is we find to be key as far as administrative tasks that you can take uh, to kind of uh, prepare for the, uh, for the future and keep your database in, in good shape. Uh, the first one being a index rebuild. Uh, we like to have, we like to see a weekly index rebuild happening on um, you know whether it be Sunday mornings or you know early Saturday, uh, you know sometime uh, outside of business hours. Um, SQL Server based SQL Server will use indexes to look up and pull any of the data out that you request, and performing an index rebuild will help SQL Server to update uh, its location basically of all the data that it has in its system just so that it can be sure that it's finding it uh, in the most efficient way. Um, in the same vein, uh, the wait stats update uh, is a, another preventative maintenance job. Uh, we recommend having that one run um, at a daily time. It's not as resource intensive, so it can run during business hours, but we like to have it still run um, you know, in the early morning or late at night. Uh, what this job does is uh, it'll update the what's called the wake statistics. Um, every time SQL Server goes to make an action, um, if it has to wait for just milliseconds or uh, you know sub milliseconds, it, it records all of that time and uh, it uses those it uses those times to make its decisions in the future. So if it had to wait a really long period to return one query or to do one action for you. Uh, you know, it'll it'll start to remember that, and you know, start to avoid making those decisions that lead to those waits, or it'll start you know planning that they take, you know, it'll start assuming that they'll take you know a set amount of time. Uh, per performing a daily wait stats update keeps those accurate and uh, keeps SQL Server making decisions efficiently and uh, you know, choosing the right actions for you. Uh, so the changes from either aren't going to be too huge unless you just completely didn't have them in the past. Um, but they're, they're both together uh, great preventative steps uh, for SQL Server in general. Uh, another thing that we like to do at this point in time is run a check DB. What this will do is just check the, check the integrity of the database and let us know if anything is out of order or if there's, if there's any corruption or anything uh, any red flags, uh, you know, in the storage system. So uh, a lot of times it's a good, just a good period for us to run that as well. Um, and you know, depending on the results, we can look into that further or uh, move on to backups. Oh, I'm sorry. Before backups, actually, we are going to. Uh, Stop into the job history for each of those jobs that I uh, that I just explained. Uh, so, jobs set up previously are going to have a backlog of all the times they had that they have run, and whether or not that whether or not the run was successful. Uh, you know, jumping in here will let us see any error messages that have been thrown, or you know, just kind of how the database has been working you know, previously. Uh, we we see some systems where you know everything is you know in working order and has been in working order since since they set it up and some systems where you know a job may not have been running for a few months just because nobody was really seeing the, uh, the log file viewer or no one was in a, really in a position to, to notice that. Um, so after maintenance plans uh, we will look into your backup solution. So um, I'll, I'll work with you to um, you know to make sure that you have hourly transaction log backups and uh, a daily full uh, full production backup. We'll also want to make sure that uh, we'll also want to make sure that you're archiving these backups somewhere off-site, and, um, and we'll want to go ahead and test it by bringing up a uh, an archived or a, an older version of the database and restoring it over uh, you know over a test database, just making sure that that process runs smoothly. Um, so that in the event of a disaster or a uh, data recovery kind of action, we know that uh, you know we can be certain that that's something that will work for us. Uh, so after after we handle your backups, um, we will go in and look 
Uh, SQL Server itself uses a few additional databases other than the production databases, the development databases. Um, an example of that would be TempDB here. Uh, you can think of TempDB as almost like scratch paper that SQL Server will use when making uh, kind of impromptu calculations and uh, what's called ad hoc queries. Uh, so it's good to kind of clean that and, and make sure that it's in good running order as well. Uh, we go through that, um, uh, checking the same database settings that kind of that I glossed over in the beginning of the in the beginning of the discussion here. So next, we will run a few SQL scripts uh, that we have, um, some industry standards that a few uh, wise DBAs have made to assess performance of, uh, of SQL Server. Uh, it takes kind of a big picture approach, and uh, it, it's able to uh, generate a list like we see here. Um, in this example, uh, we have a missing index request in that second row, and uh, or a compilation timeout in the first row. Um, these kinds of things aren't immediate red. They aren't immediate red flags, but uh, it's just good to kind of run this to just start to have an idea of where to look and start to see if there's anything that can be done to uh, improve performance or optimize the system. Another uh, another neat little query we have here that we that we run when assessing your environment. Uh, this one will this one will actually gather a list of all of the the most problematic queries, so the most resource-intensive actions that uh, that people take, uh, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis. So we'll be able to see, you know, if it's a certain kind of billing action or email action that, uh, you know, that is giving people grief or, or causing a lock or causing trouble. We'll be able to start to analyze that and, and narrow it down. Uh, you know, in the event that there isn't really or that, that there aren't really a lot of locks or issues. Um, it's good to still gather this data and have these lists so we have something to reference and look back on. Um, because then if something does come up, we can go back and say, you know, well, uh, you know, at, at this time or, you know, in October it ran this way. We kind of have something to, to compare the two between, which um, helps with a lot of SQL Server troubleshooting stuff. Um, it, normally, if you, if you don't have that, you're, you can kind of be in the dark as far as uh, figuring out a why um, or a reason why things happen. All right, so the last step of the SQL Server process is PAL. Uh, this is Microsoft's performance analysis of logs tool. Um, it's just a, a, a free tool that Microsoft developed and they have in addition to the log parser that will download and get installed on your SQL Server environment. Uh, the end result of which you'll see in the top right is this analysis of PAL, Microsoft SQL Server report. Uh, this report is an HTML document and about 30 or 40 images. Um, it's going to it's going to gather and comb through weight stats and dynamic management views uh, that SQL Server keeps uh, that, that SQL Server keeps track of, and uh, it'll it'll start to flag us and compare those weight stats and settings to benchmark settings, and it'll alert us every time that it goes over that benchmark. Uh, this is just an example of the beginning of that report. If we were to scroll down some more, uh, you can see that we have uh, in the tool parameters section we have the date it ran and the duration that it ran, along with some of the details on the server and the location of the logs. And then um, oh, I apologize. And then down below the alerts um, in the yellow, uh, in the yellow we have warnings. This is just when whichever particular setting or or weight stat uh, went over the prescribed value. And then the red ones are also warnings, but those are ones that we should at least look into or uh, or be aware of. Uh, oftentimes, you find with SQL Server, uh, there you know there can be uh, trends where you you get a lot of warnings for one thing, and then you never see it again. It could just be associated with certain processes. So, um, taking this baseline data, it's it's rare to find uh, kind of a needle in a haystack or like a a, a main problem. Uh, it's just good to gather the 
the data from every angle so that if there if a problem were to arise we have it and uh, you know we can dive into the to the data and figure out what what was leading to it um, in in future you know in future health checks if we were to have say let's let's look at, look at these two graphs here um, and if we were to take another health check we could, and if we were to compare these um, with like six months time in between you know we would hope that they would stay the same but if we started to see a drastic increase in say uh, on, on in the picture on the right example the total latch wait time if we would see a you know a ridiculous increase or decrease in that uh, in between search sequels or health checks we could start to deduce that you know something is going on related to that you know whether that be storage or uh, a different setting entirely um, uh, a, a, a common um, a common thing that that perfmon tracks, which is really nice, uh, and a lot of clients I think run into this or see it in their day to day, is uh, SQL Server locks. Um, if it's going to track the lock requests that happen throughout the throughout the duration of the test runs, and remember we're going to run the tests um, you know, from the, from the beginning of a business day to the beginning of the next, or even longer in some cases. So it'll definitely pull in a you know results from a unique or a diverse time frame. Uh, some locking is is definitely good and expected. Uh, it's actually how SQL Server makes requests uh, internally and how it how it helps or how it um, gathers the data that you like it to. Um, but as as most of us know, locks can also be detrimental and uh, kind of ruin your day if two users are trying to do something similar. Uh, so that's definitely something that where you look at uh, that we pour through with a uh, you know with a fine tooth comb to see if there's anything that we can do to to improve those. So the final results here of uh, of the process, um, we we would share these three files with you. The top one here you see is all of the images from the PAL report. Um, the bottom one, the Chrome link, is going to be the HTML link that is the PAL report itself, and then the PDF file is our uh, is our SQL Server Help Check results form that um, we'll be able to go through with you and show you the uh, the, you know, the details that we gathered and the results that we have, and then we'll also be able to discuss the conclusions that we've come to. And uh, most of the time on the same call, we can start making the changes. Um, many times they're just small configuration changes or just setting up new jobs. Um, you know, pretty slight, um, minute changes that are just kind of best practices and preventative maintenance kind of things. Uh, it's, you know, it, it can happen where we have more serious work or jobs or, you know, database integrity things to handle, and we can definitely start planning that at this time as well. Uh, so for SQL Server health checks, uh, it's it's recommended or it's wise to at least uh, go through the process on a yearly basis, so you have an updated and and an accurate idea of your uh, of your environment and the and the status of everything. Um, it, it also wouldn't be too bad.